Imagine I get sucked into it. Oh my God, that would be such a fun video. If I like got sucked into the vent in my house and it transported me to a world that I never knew existed. <sighs> Shit like that would only happen to like Mr. Beast. Like... I found out this morning, is it lyrical? I can lyrical dance. I think I'm gonna go to Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Anyways, I'm here today to do the mid-year freakout tag. Get your freak on. Get your freak on. Get your freak on. I'm in a really insane mood that I think is not gonna translate well on here. I'm sorry for this video if I'm acting like a menace. It's because, I don't know, I'm manic. <laughs> I think the best part about feeling like this is knowing that in a couple hours, like around like 7 p.m., 8 p.m., I'm going to feel like shit. I'm gonna feel the worst I've ever felt. But right now, I feel great. I feel like, oh my god, I can run a fucking marathon, triathlon. Like, I could fly. And I'm gonna feel like this forever. But I'm, I know, and you know, and we know that I will not feel like this forever. In fact, it might only last. 20 more minutes. So I've been seeing a couple people do like the, the book mid-year freakout tag. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't watched a single one of those videos. I'm so sorry. So I don't know exactly what it is. I imagine like a tag, like I remember tags from early YouTube, like the best friend tag, the pet tag. It, it has like a structure. I don't have any interest in structuring my videos ever. So we're not doing that. Instead, I'm just gonna go through Goodreads and look at the books that I've read so far this year and then see where I wanna go with like the rest of my reading year. <laughs> So it looks like the first book that I read this year was The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada, which I loved. I gave it four stars, very short book. I started out this year really wanting to read longer books, like 500, 600 pages plus. I think I've done a pretty good job of that, although this book is like 100 pages. So it wasn't a great one to start off <laughs> the year with for that reason, but it was a good book. It's like a workplace surrealism. If you watched Severance, which you should, I believe they stopped production of season two because of the writer's strike. I don't know if they've started that up again. Um, I believe the writer's strike is still going on, so probably not. So honestly, at this point, like, if they don't figure that shit out, paying your fucking writers, I'm gonna have to step in and do something about that because I want to see season two of Severance. I think it ended on such a cliffhanger. But if you've watched Severance, I think you would love this book. Maybe not, though. I don't know you. And then I read Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion, which is the second one in the Legendborn series. I haven't read a ton of YA. I don't even know why I read this book, but I'm so glad I did because it is so extremely good. It has such an incredible point of view. It's like Arthurian legends mixed with black history and colonialism, slavery, and it's combined. It's so incredibly good. Then I read Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer. It's just about ecology. This one's about moss. She's an indigenous woman as well as ecologist. And then I read Luster by Raven Lilani. I thought this was good. I don't remember too much about it. It's about like a young black woman. I think she lives in New York and she starts an affair with a businessman. Just like emotional familial drama. Um, I think it, I, I enjoyed it. And then I read Educated by Tara Westover, which I've talked about a ton. And I loved, she gr gr grew up in Idaho in a survivalist family, preparing for the Armageddon. And then when she's like 17, decides to go to university and just the world opens up to her and the lies that her parents told her and all this fear mongering just 
dissipates. It's so good. It's so goddamn good. And then I read The Snow Child by Ewan Ivy, which was just like a fun little, it felt very like fairy tale, fun, harmless, but also like devastatingly sad. And then I read What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, which I read kind of for fun, but then I ended up actually following Hiroki Murakami's routine for a week. I enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah, it's just like his collection of journals. Hiroki Murakami, as you know, maybe, is like a super popular Japanese surrealist fiction writer. And it just like was very interesting. I think that like diary format books are so fascinating because it's like, this is crazy that you're just telling me this shit. Then I read Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, which is her collection of essays, straying outside of just moss, everything ecology, just plants and trees and people. And then I read Kafka on the Shore by Hiroki Murakami, which I enjoyed. I don't know too much to say, but I guess I gave it five stars. I liked it. We're, we're waging like a war right now within this channel for like contemporary fantasy series. The three series are Akratar, Alex Stern, and The Atlas. Atlas? That series is called The Atlas. Damn. That's bad. But I did a video a few months ago where I read the first book in all of those series. And I'm currently working on round two. I'm about to start the last book, A Court of Mist and Fury. And we have About Grace by Anthony Doerr. It was good, fun. I've read a lot of his books. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I freaking loved. It's about like video game developers in like the 90s. There were parts of it that I've like never experienced in a book before that kind of blew me away. Heaven by Miyako Kawakami. So fucking sad. I really want to read more books from her. It's about these two kids in Japan who get bullied. They're like in, I think they're like eighth grade. Super like visceral and traumatic and just so exceptionally sad. And then I read Penin by Vladimir Nabokov, which I liked. The language was quite... I wonder if it was written in Russian because Vladimir Nabokov wrote Lolita, which I believe was his first time writing in English, which I think maybe is why Lolita was a bit easier to understand for me, at least the language. I think maybe this was translated from Russian. The writing at times was difficult to understand, but overall it was kind of, it, it reminded me a lot of Mr. Bean. <laughs> like, Penin reminded me of Mr. Bean. And it just was like silly. I realized that I bought Pale Fire as well by Vladimir Nabokov months ago, and it hasn't arrived in the mail. So I don't know what that's about. Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer, which is just a nonfiction deep dive into eating animals and its effects on a micro scale as well as a macro scale, but mainly the livestock industry and the effects, the horrible, damaging, extremely harmful effects that it's having on the environment. And I thought it was really, really well done. It was super well written, a lot of personality and charisma, but also at the same time, super educational. And then I read The Hole by Hiroko Oyamada, which was just another fun, like hundred pages, surreal little story from Oyamada. I think it was kind of based on like Alice in Wonderland, this whole idea of like this the hole and the rabbit going down the hole, but it wasn't a rabbit. It was like a scary, weird, freaky creature. I think the ending, kind Kind of fell flat but overall like it just is a fun little kind of like a fairy tale type story and then my life changed when i read the three body problem by si Xin lu it's a sci-fi book about aliens an alien invasion is impending very like humanistic i think it's very realistic kind of, of like seeing what the world and what people would do if aliens were proven to exist. You know, factions would be created and people would be arguing and fighting. I mean, religion would be like... And I love how at its base, it is like real and true science. This alien civilization lives in the star system of Alpha Centauri, which is like a three body star system. It has three suns and there's like chaotic eras and stable eras. And you know, like it's not a good place for life of any sort to be just because it is such an erratic system. And Alpha Centauri is real. It's like the closest star system to our star, I believe, or something like that. And then I read Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller, which was my First book. Okay. James. The fuck was that? That was a hearse. 
And then I read Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller, which was the first book for my book club, Priority of Sean. And I gave it five stars. It's a memoir, but it's like also kind of like a biography of, I think David Starr Jordan was his name. Lulu Miller kind of uses David Starr Jordan, who was this taxonomist, who I believe was born in the mid 19th century. So he's like long dead, but um, he was quite famous, quite influential in like the science world. She kind of uses him as a vessel to tell her own story because I think that she is quite introverted and it seems that like it starts out with her going through a breakup and she is having a hard time with herself. And I think that she kind of uses this figure to tell her own story through his. And then I read Milk Fed by Melissa Broder, which is just like, sorry, I just had a hair in my mouth. It's so good. Melissa Broder, she has a very like demented, fucking hilarious mind. But Milk Fed is about this woman, a lapsed Orthodox Jew who has an eating disorder. It's like darkly funny, but not in the way that like some random white comedian man would get on stage and be like, so what's up with all this woke? <laughs> It's like actually funny, but in a very dark way. And then I read Catch the Rabbit by Lona Bastabaj. I don't know. This was like a road trip. It reminded me a lot of the movie Carol. It's like two women go on a road trip. And in my mind, there was romantic connection there, but I enjoyed it. And then I read Bunny by Mona Awad, which is, um, I thought it was okay. I thought it was fine. <laughs> And then I read The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty, which I was such a fan of. So, so, so good. It's like just this group of characters who live in different places in America, but it's like set in Indiana in this town. And it just switches from their perspectives. All of their storylines are so interesting, so like wacky and incredibly idiosyncratic. Each character's storyline was just equally as fun to read about as the others, and I loved it big big fan and then i read the poetry collection which i think is the only poetry i've read this year is the carrying by ada limone some really beautiful words in that poetry collection and then i read sorrow and bliss which reminded me a lot of one of my favorite shows fleabag as well as probably like i feel like it's everyone's favorite show woman in like i think she's in like her mid to late 30s she's got her own issues she's dealing with as well as like her family has some issues, there's like relationship problems. Super funny, super fun to read about. I was a big, big, big fan. Between the World and Me is a book by, I, I believe he's a journalist. He's an African-American man and this is his letter to his 15 year old son about just being black in America and what he believes his son should understand. And then I read If an Egyptian Cannot Speak English. It was good. This was giving like Sally Rooney, quite moody and serious and very dramatic. Although with an Egyptian, Flare. Do androids dream of electric sheep? Which is just Blade Runner. I liked it. I love those movies. I read it for my book club. Everyone either really enjoyed it or really hated it. I'd say I'm I'm closer to this side. I, I quite liked it. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I loved this book. Ultimately what I loved about it was the lack of plot and it's super character heavy. It was just like 10 to 15, maybe 20 different characters. The main character commits a murder senselessly and then you just kind of watch him fall apart from guilt and paranoia of getting caught. But then also like, there's so many different characters in his life, people dying and people getting married and people falling in love and falling out of love. It was just so much fun to read about these characters that felt so real. And then I read They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurraqib, which is a collection of essays. He is a journalist and it's about music, but also like pop culture. I really enjoyed it. And then I read The Dark Forest, which is the second book in the three body problem series. Equally as good as the first one, if not better. I think what I loved so much about this one is in the first one, it was really about how people would react initially. And now with the second one, people have settled into this idea of these aliens coming to get them and they're starting to prepare. And it made me think a lot about the future. As you know, the globe gets hotter and hotter and what we're gonna have to do do, what technological advances we're going to experience in order to solve this issue that right now we're really kind of like well whatever millionaires and billionaires and the elite are just polluting the shit out of the environment but they're like well, I'm doing good. Like, I'm doing great. So I don't know why I would have to make a change. And then I read The Piano Teacher, which I uh, yeah, undoubtedly am a really big fan of. I still am not entirely sure how to 
feel about it. I mean, I've never experienced anything like it. It's about this piano teacher at this conservatory in Vienna. She's like 38, lives with her mother and develops this relationship with one of her students, one of her underage students. It's just like, it's a mix of so many things. Like it's like so incredibly funny, but also so incredibly dark and disturbing. I loved it. Like I really did love it, but I also am just kind of like, I want more people to read it. If you're watching this and you can like stomach some real disturbing shit, please read this book for me and comment below how you feel about it or something. You know, there's strength in numbers. And then I read The Overstory by Richard Powers. Huge fucking fan of, ginormous fan of. Loved it, loved, loved, loved it. It's about environmentalism and forestry and destruction of old growth forests and climate change and just impending doom. I, the the eco-terrorism I was not expecting, but I was a huge fan of. And they weren't throwing tomato soup at the Mona Lisa. They were like blowing shit up. I then read Trust by Hernan Diaz for Priory of Sean, which I just posted a full video on this book on my Patreon. So if you want to go on some video, you know what I was like. <laughs> which I really mean, uh, I loved it up until the last part. There's four parts. The way the story progresses is so genius. It was like genres within a genre within genres and the first three parts I loved and then the last part the part four it was super unsatisfying to me recently I read get in my swamp um which I'll just I'll just point you to the video I'll put it up there or somewhere over there go watch that if you want to know my thoughts on that book and yeah shit that's everything I've read so far this year from here what I'm seeing is I think I would like to read a lot more nonfiction. I actually recently built a little like TBR pile, which I guess I could just grab that and show you. So this is like what I am hoping to read coming up very soon. Ew, there's hair on it. Ugh. Which I guess I'll quickly just go through. First, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I got Jane by Maggie Nelson, which is like a mix of poetry, prose, true crime, mystery, murder, investigative journalism. I don't know, man. And then I have Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe, which I'm reading very soon. It's my pick for my book club, which if you own this book or if you want to read this book, you could join my book club and read it with a group of really epic motherfuckers. And then at the beginning of next month, I'll have like a full video that I'll post on there about this. And then I've got the last book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy, Death's End, which I'm super super excited for. The Body Keeps the Score, which is a nonfiction about trauma and the brain. I decided this summer I want to teach myself neuroscience. And I have not, I have not started at all, so. Then I have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Killers of the Flower Moon, which I've had for years. But now the movie's coming out in a couple of months. I figured I should probably get to it. The Right to Sex by Amiya Smile. It's a really cool name. Srini Vasan. Then I have The Brain, The Story of You by David Eagleman, which is like a nonfiction neuroscience book. The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking by Katie Mack, which is about the universe and the beginning of it, how it works and the end of it. And then I got Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, which is about the Sackler family, who essentially created the opioid epidemic, which has killed hundreds of thousands of people because of greed, and they wanted money. Anyways, thanks for watching. How about you tell me some of your favorite things you've read this year? Follow me on Instagram, maybe. I gotta get to 10,000 followers on there by the end of the month, or else something really bad is gonna happen to me. <laughs> and the blood will be on your hands. Just saying. I post really stupid shit on there though, so you don't have to follow me. <laughs> okay, bye. My knuckles, I have like, um, I've got, oh, sorry. I've got like Kim Kardashian body fingers. You can see it's like slim, thick, slim, thick, slim. Like it's like, it's got like an hourglass shaped body.